Is the autofocus working? Seems to be okay. I've updated the GH5 to the latest firmware to see if the autofocus issue is resolved because apparently it should be better. So wish me luck. Usually I use the, the Voigtlander lenses, which are manual focus. But I thought I would just give it a go and see how it works. So you tell me in the comments if, um, if it's usable. And then the next episode, maybe we'll just swap back to the Voigtlander. Let's see. Welcome to the channel, my name is Vanessa Karakea and in this episode we're going to be talking about how to speed ramp your epic handheld b-roll shots. This is a question we get asked a lot and we're going to dive into how to speed ramp your videos in Adobe Premiere Pro because sometimes that can be a bit tricky. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button because in upcoming videos we're going to talk about how to actually film these epic handheld b-roll shots. We're going to be talking about the pre-production like storyboarding and shot lists to the actual filming, what equipment you need, what equipment we're using. After that we're going to dive into the post-processing, the editing, the sound effects, the music mix and the color correction and a very important part is also how to actually export your video for the different social media platforms, for instance, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So hit the subscribe button and give a thumbs up if you like the video. And I'm using the Omnet video as a demonstration. First of all, I'm gonna show you the whole video so you can actually see how much speed ramping goes into this video. We're not gonna talk about the edit itself and we're not gonna talk about color correction or any effects or any camera movement. So as you saw in the film, and as you can see in the Premiere timeline, there is a lot of speed ramping. Now you might think, how can you see the speed ramping in the timeline? Because usually I use the effects control panel, and that's where you would see the time remapping effect, which essentially is speed ramping. I personally don't really like to use the effects control panel because you don't have an overview of the whole clip. You cannot see how long it is, how short it is what's the next clip, what's the clip beforehand, what's um, the layer above or below that clip. So for me personally, I like to do it in the timeline. And if you open up Premiere's timeline, then you will not see the time remapping keyframes or the time remapping effect straight away. You have to activate it first. So it works a lot faster and you can actually see what you're doing instead of sort of guessing in the control effects panel how long is the clip and is it going to match the next clip or does it match the clip beforehand. You cannot move around any layers or anything. So for me this is the way to go. To activate the time remapping keyframe so you can speed ramp your clip you're going to have to do a right click on your layer and then you go to show clip keyframes, time remapping and then you go to speed. So I activated this for the clip that I've chosen here because there was no speed ramping effect on there. Now you can see the other clips before and after they have the time remapping effect and they have keyframes. And there also you cannot really see how the effect is working. You can just see the keyframes. So what you want to actually see is the curve of the speed ramping itself. So what you can do is you can use Alt and then you go over this part here and then you zoom in with your mouse and then you scale 
the layer so you can actually see the curve of the time remapping. Or you can also just hold the shift key and then you scale up and down all the layers. So this actually helps with visibility to see what you're doing because you do want to see these kind of curves. So you know which clips have the time remapping effect and which clips you've speed ramped and how much you've speed ramped them. Now we've activated the time remapping as you can see. At the moment it's 100% playback speed. You can see that either by going over it with the mouse, you can see time remapping speed is 100% or you can just do right click and then go to speed and duration and there you see it's 100%. Also. You would see it here in the effects control panel. Speed is 100%. It's all filmed in slow motion, 120 frames per second. So if we play back, it doesn't change the speed, it's all slow motion. But now we would like to have it slow motion the first half and then speed wrap it so that it goes smoothly into the next clip. For that, we're gonna have to add a keyframe. You'd use the pen tool, or P, and then you'll make a keyframe. Now nothing of course has changed. You want to speed ramp this part, the second part. So you can grab this line and just pull it up and then you can see already the different speeds and you can go all the way up to whatever value you want to. I think the maximum is 10,000. And then it's gonna speed up that part of the clip. I like to switch off all the effects in my timeline so that it plays back really smoothly. And for that you can go up to the global FX mute and just click on that. And all the effects that you might have applied, like color correction or any presets, slots, whatever, will be muted so you just see the raw clip. That way it plays back way faster. But anyway, we speed ramp this clip way too fast. This is around 3000% speed ramp, which is way too much. It's just about three frames long. So we want to reduce it to, I don't know, let's say uh, 1000 maybe. There's a little trick. You can set an in and an out point and then you can choose loop playback and then it will just loop that part. This looks not bad already, but you can fine tune it. And this is where these handles come in very handy. You have to pull them apart. So you don't have a hard cut in between the slow and the fast footage. It doesn't go from 100% to 1000% in one keyframe. That's just a way to sort of make a little curve so that it slowly ramps up into the fast speed ramp. And this doesn't look too bad already, but you can actually fine tune it even more. So you just click in between the two keyframes or the two handles, doesn't matter which one you click, and then you have the busy curve handles that pop up. And then you can turn it slightly and have a really nice curve. So it slowly transitions into the higher speed. So this looks a lot better. It's a more natural and a more smooth movement. Now you can do all of this in the time remapping uh, control effects panel as well. You can tweak the busy handles here as well. But for me, I find it's really hard to work in here because it's just not usable. It's like, I have no idea what's coming afterwards. I have no idea how long the clip is gonna be because the longer you pull the keyframes apart, the longer the clip gets, of course, because if the ramp goes slowly, it's gonna take more time, so your clip is gonna extend a bit. But if you're in the control effects panel, you have absolutely no overview of your whole timeline and the effect. So that's why it's easier to use this effect in the timeline itself. And if for some reason the clip needs to be a tiny bit longer, like you can see a gap here, and for instance, you have a music beat or anything, that comes exactly here and you have to cut it exactly there, then you can just slightly reduce the speed to make the clip longer so that it matches the cut or you can extend the handles a bit to make the transition a bit longer and then that will make the clip longer. You can also go into the middle of the two keyframes here of, or the handles and of course, when you move this back and forth, it depends in which direction you're moving it. If you're moving it to the right, you're shortening the part that has a thousand percent speed and you're extending the part that has a hundred percent speed. So of course the clip is gonna be longer because you have a longer part, which is a hundred percent. It's a bit confusing at times, but once you get into it, it's pretty straightforward and you exactly know what to do when using this effect. And of course you can cut just the part that you need to cut. 
there are so many different ways to speed ramp. If you look at the timeline, you can see all the different curves going from slow to fast to slow or from fast to slow. It really depends on the clips and how you want to have the clips transition into each other. But we're going to be talking about editing epic handheld b-roll footage in upcoming episodes. And that's just about it. There's nothing more to it. That's how we speed ramp our clips. And a little quick tip, if you're wondering why we stacked two timelines on top of each other, it's a simple reason. The top part is the raw footage. So we add all the raw footage in the top timeline. You can choose the clips that you like in the top timeline and then just drag and drop them down into your main edit. So that way you always have an overview of what you have. And also we like to set markers. You just press M on the keyboard and it sets a marker. If you press double M, it opens up the marker and then you can write, I don't know, whatever that stuff is, green stuff, and then you can give it a color. And that way in one go, you can see on your timeline where your best shots are. And that's a very simple way to organize your timeline, to see what shots you have. And for example, you can use the second layer as your good shots, and then you can use the third layer for your best shots. And that way you have a little selection of the different types of shots, and then you can just drag and drop them down into your timeline, depending what you need for your edit. But we're gonna dive into the editing process in one of the upcoming episodes. So stay tuned for that. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and we'll make sure to answer them as soon as we can. Subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next video.